Caitlin, how are you? I am hanging in there right now. Oof. It is it's Friday. It's uh it's my first food truck day here in Sioux City. Oh yeah, Pretty that's always a great day. That. And you guys are yeah. close enough to probably just walk it, right? Yeah. Probably a nice I, walk. I dressed for the weather that we have and not the weather that I want. Um, coincidentally, <laughs> the weather that we're having today is the weather that I want. So I, yeah, oh, is I'm it like my best 70s thing. and kind of cool, but sunny. Yeah. Yes. I'm, That's I nice. have my, I have my feminist grandmother sunglasses at the ready. I'm, Fantastic. I'm jazzed. Yeah. I'm sure. I love a Paloma. Will. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're Everything, not going to take a paloma and, with you on your walk no right? i'm not going to i but think that's I, illegal it is it's like frowned upon in i the mean open quotes. container so here's a question so open container when you walk is illegal but if what if you put a lid on it and i don't a straw is that still open yeah i guess we'd need know. a police officer or a lawyer to talk to us and that sounds boring right. so um no, let's talk you. about what a paloma is so um did zach pick this drink i'm curious he picked this drink <laughs> So Zach chooses okay. everything for us. Well, we can ask him. Yeah, I, I definitely chose his drink. Oh, oh, there, he is. there he is. The phantom voice. He has his camera off, so the phantom voice coming in. Um, I actually, a... oh, sorry. I just wanted to tell no, you so, why. So that was the fun fact. Yeah. I actually had a really good one at a place yeah. called Fizzy's in Omaha. And I was mm -hmm. like, let's do a Paloma. <laughs> let's do it. it. Super good. So I do like a Paloma. And I, I will give too. you the like down and dirty quick three second paloma once we get through the real one so yeah. um real one these are super refreshing and really great mm -hmm. when it's warm outside um ounce and a half of tequila a half an ounce of lime juice fresh squeezed as caitlin would always remind yes. us um an ounce of grapefruit juice um so it should be fresh squeezed but that's a lot of that's a lot of heavy lifting you can get pretty good stuff in the little cans which is what mm -hmm. we do because it simply has a good one like the mm -hmm. the the grapefruit juice yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then if you want to you can put some soda water in it if you want a little fizz uh and then like garnish it with a grapefruit peel or lime wedge um so good yeah so we're into dried fruits for garnish now mm -hmm. um because we had a blood orange and it was going to go bad because they only last so long so we mm -hmm. sliced it and dehydrated it in the toaster oven, um, which is <laughs> like, oven. I think you put it on. Was it low. when you were having, when you were having all of the oven troubles? Yeah. That was our only okay. oven at the time. Got it. But I, I was think, like, I toast oven. Um, and it, it fit on one of the little cookie sheets anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was just like, we kept it on like a hundred degrees. It was a super low temperature mm -hmm. for just a really long time. Yeah. It's like smoking um, meats, low and slow. <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah, so tequila, lime juice, grapefruit juice, feel free to double or triple those if you want to, um, mm -hmm. obviously. You put uh, everything uh, into a cocktail shaker, obviously not the soda water or not the, the, soda the water. garnish. Yeah. Um, shake that baby with ice to make it um, cold, I guess is what that does, and combined. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I'm out of it today, so we've got a lot going on here. Um, and then pour it into a glass and drink it. It's, yeah, the drinking part is the important part. I cheat with these, and Fever Tree makes a really delightful grapefruit soda. Mm. So I just do my, like, tequila and lime juice in there. It's also, so, uh, and then just, and then, and then just a straw. It's great. My super down and dirty cheat on this is Fresca and tequila. Oh, that's a choice. Like, yeah. I mean, some people, Fresca is a love it or hate it. I get it. Like, it is a controversial soda. Uh huh. Um, so the Fresca, the hard Frescas that they've made, we tried and we did not like them at all. They were oh. terrible. But we like a good, refreshing this, Fresca. Yeah. So um, that's really. Uh, down and dirty and cheap, but you can also buy the little tiny cans of grapefruit juice, and it's so mm -hmm. easy to do grapefruit juice, tequila, squeeze a little lime in there. It's, it takes like five seconds. Yeah, um, yeah. I also Moral like. Moral of the story is Paloma is a great patio pounder, porch pounder, patio porch pounder. pounder, patio pounder. Depends on whether you have a porch or a patio. No, I was like, I, we have both, so it's hard to say. 
Yeah, we, we really a front, just have front porch and a back patio. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I think you anywhere also... anywhere is a good place to drink some tequila and grapefruit juice. <laughs> it really is. Um, and this one is fun because you can be like high class and put it in a coupe glass and have a yeah. really nice sippy cocktail. Or you can like quadruple the ingredients and put it in your Yeti or whatever your choice of <laughs> thermal beverage container is and um, just take six Take it to the golf the course. Porch. Yeah. Sure. Why not? My favorite thing about golf is when they come around with the alcohol cart. I mean, it's expensive. Yeah, the, but the bar cart. Ooh, the bar cart is. Cart? Bar cart? What do they beverage. call it? I think bar cart. They have know, snacks either. too sometimes. Beer cart? Beer cart. Yeah. I but they always have beer, beer, which is great. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. So that's our drink. We have not talked at all, except that Zach is our guest today. So what are we talking about? Well, today is all about a flexible work environment, which is oddly um, prescient, given that you are recording from home in a room full of dogs while you pack your your house to relocate, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like, we'll see. Right. Like, it's uh, it's mostly a done deal at this point. Yeah. So, and like relocating um, like three blocks. You're not going very far. But oh, all of that like, to say. It's like 30 it, I miles. Know. I mean, it's Papillion. So it's it's down there. Um, but yeah, okay, so on that, sure. since we were on that tangent, um, just got noticed that our house that we're selling appraised at value. So that's good. Woohoo! That's great. There's one thing they want to look at from the inspection just to verify. So hopefully it's nothing. Mm -hmm. The new house loan is approved. Um, appraisal came in fine. Um, however, oh, no. uh, because it's a VA loan, weirdest thing ever. With so sometimes with VA loans, like there's little things you need. You don't have to do an inspection, but you have to do an appraisal, mm -hmm. and the appraisal mm -hmm. looks at certain things. So what we have to do, or what the sellers have to do, there's a shed yeah, out back, and it's a no. decent shed. It's solid. Mm -hmm. It's got a new roof, everything, uh, but the paint is chipping off. The no shed lead paint. To, well, it's not lead even. The shed. But there's no no chipping paint. Period. Nope. Paint has to be, it has to be scraped and repainted mm -hmm. and they specified mm -hmm. specifically. Scraped, painted, and all of the paint chips need to be removed. I used to process mortgage loans and this mm -hmm. is also a requirement on FHA loans. Yep. Yeah. VA and FHA. Coincidentally, that work environment was not flexible Oof. and is part of the reason that yeah. I don't work there anymore. Got it. Well, we have a pretty good flexible work environment, and I think it we honestly do. does keep people here. I, I believe that if somebody were to go to a traditional environment where you get, I mean, I've had some where you don't get any vacation for the first year, and then mm -hmm. you get two weeks or a week, and then, and after then it's five like five years, years before, yeah, the third yeah. week, yeah, and then and, and then, then that's like, it, and you just like cap out, and yeah. you get fifteen days a year to be a person, and then the rest of the time you have to be an employee. It's fucking garbage. Yep. And sometimes oh. there's sick time, sometimes there's not sick time. So we don't do any of that. Um, I'm gonna, my rage is going to carry, I'm going to fly away. Okay. Well, don't fly away. Like, wow. Not from, not from here, but like, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Well, we'll get into that with Zach, but the point is <laughs> Zach um, had been in the office almost every day if he didn't need to like be home with his dog or whatever. With his um, puppy, Miss a girl. She's so sweet. Yeah, but and he'll explain it better to us. But his wife got a job as a travel nurse, which is an amazing job if you're a nurse and can get it. I guess there's it's wonderful pay, good benefits. They pay for your expenses and living. And yeah. so Zach debated like, OK, like, do I just travel to see her on the weekends and stay in mm -hmm. Omaha or do I just pack up and go with her? And that's what he chose. And mm -hmm. um, we'll see, like, if he was nervous to talk about that or ask about that. But it is within our policies. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so he's a really good example of kind of living the dream of the flexible work environment. Mm -hmm. And he just got back from his first kind of round of that, I think three months in Indianapolis, if I recall. That went um, so fast. It did go fast. I was um, like, certainly it was only like six weeks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was three months. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the difference, like we were talking about, between, you know, traditional work, you know, time off remote working office working um what's flexible work how is that different from mm -hmm. work from home or vacation policy or remote working how are they related um and how the heck does unlimited pto work like personal time off for those who don't mm -hmm. use the pto thing um yeah. 
because we have that as well. And is it really unlimited? What does that mean? And are there rules? You know, all that excitement. After the break. All right, don't threaten me with a good time. You said I could debate the patriarchy and now here oh, we are. Oh, well, here we go. I think we really need to get into the topic and maybe introduce the guests before we get into talking about the man keeping you down. So, all right. Hey, Zach. Hello. Good to be Zach, here, so as always. Here. Yeah, Zach's always here. He's just not usually on uh, on microphone. I was going to say camera, but nobody else gets to see the video. We don't publish that. <laughs> just us. Um, Nobody wants to see this madness. Yeah, it's a little crazy most days. Um, but yeah, so Zach, and actually jumping in and breaking in on the intro was a new one for yeah. you too. I don't think you've done that before without like a plan I, to do it. Yeah, true. Not on the intro. That's probably like, yeah. this is probably the first, maybe the second time I've done that because I just couldn't hold back. Yeah, well, I think it's joy about a Paloma. It was good context and we didn't have to wait for this part of the show to learn more about the Paloma from you. And yeah. Uh, you had a really great one. So where is Fizzy's in Omaha? Sorry. It is in Little Bohemia. Oh, Little okay. Bohemia by, by across from Arcade 2 or something? Yeah, it's right across from Dundee Bank. So in oh. that area. So oh, usually I, I park at the it. bank parking lot. Every single day. It's a sign oh, with yeah. like the cherries well, I... and the, the neon. So if you ever see that, that's Fizzy's. All right, I'll... I'll look next time, but I mean, obviously, that's our bank, so I go through that drive through constantly in that one. <laughs> you, it's the closest one to us. It opens at five. You probably really enjoy it. They have really good food and drinks. Huh, nice. What kind of food? Ooh, yeah. Um, so you can get like a really good cheeseburger, a yes. literal bucket of like fried chicken, but you can also mm. get like, oh, what is it? They have like it's it's like really like not upscale, but it's like. I guess like above like normal bar food, like like a gastro pub. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Hard to explain um, when I can't when I'm not looking at the menu. <laughs> does French the chicken... fries. I'm sure they have fries. They have to. Oh yeah, but, like I love their like, fries. Okay, but they're good. Yeah. Okay. That's. Um, does the chicken come in a metal bucket or a paper bucket? I have not ordered it yet, but um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's a paper bucket. Before okay. you leave for your next travel adventure, we need you to go order the fried chicken and tell us what kind of vessel it comes in. I th think true. it could be your a homework office. assignment. I mean, we That's could true. do it as an Omaha happy hour. We could go over there, there at five go. instead of four <laughs> since they don't open at four or open at five. Yeah. So, and just have like a bucket of fried chicken and some drinks. Palomas. It only counts if you clink your chicken drummies together, though. Mm, that works <laughs> my I mean, two Dor dorothy is really into cheersing right now but mm. she does it with everything so like do we toasted with our donuts the other day and mm. um what else she does it with like toast a lot so she like toasts her toast which i find really entertaining <laughs> i mean i'm not mad about it Cheers. like celebrate celebrate yeah. every food yeah. and beverage that you have with friends. that babe loves a party she went to her first parade last night and oh. girlfriend woke up this morning and she was like, we go to parade again. And I was like, heck yeah, we can go to a parade again. You bet. But not today. Cause there's not, to, not today. right now. Okay. Right now we need to put on our fucking shoes so we can go to daycare. The okay. shoe struggle. I tell you what. Okay. I have a friend <laughs> who's um, Todd, I guess he's like four or five, maybe. Still a um, toddler until they're like five, I think. Having a meltdown because he couldn't wear two pairs of shoes of shoes at once. Yeah. And so another friend said, I've had this. Give them one of each shoe. They'll be happy all day. It doesn't matter if they don't match. Yeah. They won't care. Um, yeah. Anyway, so now we're on to toddlers, which uh, I don't have well, that, and Zach doesn't have. Well, that made me think about what my it's parents actually went an interesting... with like that times yeah. three. Uh, three <laughs> of like... you? Oh my God, three yeah. of you at one time? That's so yeah. many shoes. If you're new to the That's podcast, so Zach shoes. is a triplet. So yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, he has two brothers his same age. Um, and an they... older sister, right? There are four Older of you sister, together. younger brother. Well, there's a younger brother too. Yep. Older sister. Oh my gosh, there's five? Yep. Mm -hmm. But the Bless younger brother doesn't look like any of them. Like, no, he's like, he's he like six foot one, you. six foot two. 
straight brown <laughs> hair. Yeah. Which, if you know what I look like, definitely nothing like me. Yeah, and you can see them on our website. But yeah, yeah like because I saw you all at that um, the Asian market in the cafeteria. Because it was like I was like, who is that with you? And you're, oh, that's my little brother. And I'm like, okay, like first of all, he's like twice your height. <laughs> yeah, not twice, definitely. but he's really tall. He's taller than me. Like it was, uh, that was bizarre, but yeah, I mean, that's genetics. That's how it works. They, uh, different people get different genes unless you're triplets, Definitely. then you all get the same genes. Well, yeah, just that like assumes different versions well, of the same gene. Identical triplets. That's true. If you're not identical triplets. For tr yeah. True. Fraternal triplets would be different. Yeah. Yeah. Although you can have fraternal or identical twins and a fraternal triplet. And a triplet. fraternal triplet. That's possible. Genes are wild. I think this is tangent. an important call out right now. But here's <laughs> the know. thing, because like all of this to say, like, bless your your mother and your father. Here's me talking about the patriarchy. And I'm like, oh, your mother. But you're, uh, presumably your dad also helped raise you and did some, th you know, parenting things. Right. But I think so. For me, as a parent of a young child, our flexible work environment ensures that as long as I'm not late for a meeting, my kid can take as long as she wants to put on her shoes because no one's going to yell mm -hmm. at me for being 10 minutes late in the morning, well, it which also is helped. a godsend because you know, girlfriend can't pick her shoes. Mm -hmm. You also eased back into from your maternity leave, as I recall, mm -hmm. like you worked from home for quite a bit because, well, one, it was like COVID times and Pandemic, daycare was hard. Pandemic, child care. And yeah. Turning over a t an infant to daycare at that point was like crazy, mm -hmm. but it's like she sleeps a lot. I could probably do a ton of work. She, at, yeah, like, she was just like near us, but then mm -hmm. as soon as she got mobile, it was like, okay, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> yeah, um, but it is nice. So, um, Zach, let's talk about your recent experience with flexible work policy, which was really a work from anywhere policy. I think would be mm -hmm. a little bit more accurate. So what was your situation? What did you do? And then we'll get into the details of why it works, how it works, and how we manage it. Yeah, sure. So um, before I went on this like crazy adventure, I'd say, I was the most like... Crazy like, adventure. It's like you said in the intro, I, I'd come into the office every day and like occasionally I'd just like stay home to take care of Misa if she was feeling sick or something. And when I first got my uh, puppy, I did the pet paternity leave. So that was probably like... <laughs> the first experience I had with mm -hmm. it, but is it yeah. Pet paternity or paw paternity? I can't remember. Either one is good. Um... <laughs> I wanted to, right? Either one of those are good. It doesn't, I think pet actually makes more sense because pot like fish don't have paws. If you need to stay home and take care of your fish or like your iguana, I don't know. Does it well, only cover it... dogs and cats? No, we call it pet adoption. Uh, leave. Okay. Um, and for us, so it's um, it's an automatic hundred percent for two weeks, uh, and then fifty percent for two weeks after that is what we. I mean, we do have a flexible schedule, but that's the official that kind of kicks in at default. So the mm -hmm. idea is that you can spend time bonding with them and getting them adjusted to their new home and their life with you, and then in the the two weeks with the fifty percent, it's you know if you're crate training or still potty training getting there and back to be able to like going back and forth is a giant pain. So basically mm -hmm. work for four hours and then go home at lunch and let your puppy out or your dog or your deal with your cat. Cats really don't need any kind of a dog deal with thing. your cat. <laughs> um, but maybe but you yeah. just prefer, maybe you just prefer working on your laptop with a little, with a little kitten in your, in your lap. That'll be, we'll have to bring Riley on for that one. Though I don't think he took time off when they got the cats. I think the cats just showed he's, up. He's, and, like he worked I think from, when from home for a little bit. Cat, he like, done it for to referee when he, yeah, when Bora came home oh, and it was like, I gotta keep these like, punks separated because pretty but now they're the him. best of friends and it's so yeah. cute. Okay, yeah, so you've taken a couple weeks just to work from home, deal with the dog. Yep, and then um, a lot, lot like further down their line, uh, Chloe was like talking to me about okay like uh, you know we have a lot of student debt and we love to travel Oof. and like this is obviously an option for us so why not like mm -hmm. like if like you should definitely talk to your work and see if this is possible because uh like it would be mm -hmm. a really good like thing for us like not only financially but just being able to like travel and like see new places in the United States like that's something we've always wanted to do mm -hmm. Because we love trying new food and seeing new places. <laughs> so, yeah, like initially when we started talking about it, I was like, even though I knew we were super flexible, 
it's not very something that I ever thought I'd have to like, you know, ask utilize. or do or mm -hmm. utilize. So I was a little nervous just with like the logistics of everything. But as soon as I had a conversation with you, Rich and, and Jesse, like it just it became really clear mm -hmm. that it was definitely something I'd be able to do and definitely something that would work well for me. So yeah, it was really great. Yeah, and I'm noticing I'm actually looking at our benefits book, page 17. <laughs> and the the work from anywhere piece didn't really make it in there. I think we were that's sort of on a case by case basis and we were kind mm -hmm. of cautious about it. Um, but technically it is written down in a policy on the server. But um typically after you've been here a year, if you need to work from another location or work remotely, um totally fine. And if that's, you know, Paris, great. If that's San Antonio, fine. Like it really doesn't matter. Um but it wasn't something that was necessarily, I don't think anybody had done it before. We didn't have any remote, fully remote employees at that time. Mm -mm. And no one had even taken like, you know, I'm going to work from my grandparents' house in Arizona for the summer. Like, or mm -hmm. actually do that in the winter. Don't do that. Winter. In the summer. Yeah. Cool. summer in Arizona is a nightmare. <laughs> that sounds um, terrible. I have uh, aunts and uncles there. My grandparents are there. We used to, where he's Very there. sweaty. We used to vacation there all the time. And like you'd get into the pool and the pool water would be 92 because it's 110 yeah. outside. And well, you're just like, it's like bathing in sweat. Anyway. All right. So um, she ended up getting a travel nursing job, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, I remember you talking about like, well, maybe I'll go with her. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just go see her sometimes. And then it was like all in, packing up. We're, we're heading mm -hmm. out. I'm going to be yeah, working remotely. it happened remotely really for... fast. It was very quick. Because I think that you had like, like, I feel like in my mind, it was like the final definitive, yeah, I'm just going to go with her was like on a Wednesday and you left on like the next Monday. I don't think it was that quite that tight, but it felt like it. We're learning really quickly. Like as we, we just accepted another contract. I don't know if I've told you yet, Rich, but oh, it's going to be in not. North Carolina and it'll be at the end of the month. So I'll be here a little longer, but um, we're learning quickly that things move pretty fast with like mm -hmm. how everything works. Like, mm -hmm. uh. Like you could apply and then like get a call back and then you could be like hired within like two days if everything goes well. That's so crazy. yeah, it definitely moves fast. So, so this being flexible. So do you feel like helps. So end of the month is her new assignment in North Carolina is fun. And actually where in North Carolina? Is it Charlotte? Charlotte? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have restaurant recommendations for you. <laughs> oh nice when i was Not at lpl one of, one of their headquarters is in charlotte so um yeah it's uh it's a fun place just, um, charlotte just like north carolina just seems like a nicholas sparks movie like mo movie based on a nicholas sparks book like that's mm -hmm. all i see is like a like long beach with some like reedy grass and like a lot of uh, um it's more like, i think uh, i think that's more south carolina uh, okay Okay. One of the things that's the... good about Charlotte, I think, is that uh, like you're only a couple hours from mountains and you're only a couple hours from a beach if you like want to go mm -hmm. either direction. Yeah. So that's a good summer spot. Well, for and... us. No kidding. And you're really close to everything on the West Coast. Like you can go up and down the West Coast super easy. Mm -hmm. East Coast. Um, OK, so here's a question for you. East Coast. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. What a day. It's Friday. I need to be done. Um, <laughs> So question for you, maybe I shouldn't triple the tequila in my Paloma. Um, <laughs> so you said, you know, she got this call like whenever it was and it's the end of the month. So we've got some time, which is fine. Do you feel like if she found out today that she needed to go like Monday, would you feel comfortable like letting us know that and just doing it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Now. Or is definitely. that like we? Okay. Like the first time like, now, a so. maybe like the first time, like, cause this could just like a new thing. And new situations can be kind of scary because you yeah. don't know like the logistics of everything. Mm -hmm. But now, like, even though I've just done one contract, it's like I feel like I kind of know like what to expect now, just based off of that like one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely not afraid anymore. <laughs> okay, so that was you did that as a work from anywhere. So something else happened while you were there, right? Because she was doing four tens, and yeah, you actually and was, shifted to flex time. Well, because we ended up like. I ended up like seeing her like she'd get home at like six and then like, she'd be so tired yeah. that she would just like you know go to bed after like a couple hours so I was like well you know I kind of want to like be able to like do things with her and like 
kind of like match up our days mm -hmm. off. So I asked you guys if I could do a four day work week and I've been trying to keep that up ever since. But yeah. And here you are working on a Friday though. I right? know, huh? A little bit of extra time. All right. So <laughs> Um, so, Caitlin, you had talked about working somewhere without a flexible work environment. You've worked at multiple places, I believe. I have. Uh, Jessica actually brought this up the other day at lunch. I'm, I'll am i be starting my fifth year here in oh God, like a couple weeks. You a I, oh, a my God. Ah! No, it's at, isn't it the end of your fifth year? It's at the end of your fifth year. But Jessica's okay, so end of year. her fifth year is coming up very soon, I think. Yeah, because she's like a year. She's a yeah. year ahead of me, I think. Um yeah, but this is the longest I've ever worked at a place at the same place, like continually, uh, ever. I think like, me too, life. honestly. It is. Actually, <laughs> it is. I'm kind of locked in, but um... yeah, you have a different set of circumstances. But I think so. It's it's a lot of things for me that all kind of coalesce together. I love the people that I work with desperately and i tell them as much uh nearly every time we sign off a meeting like love you bye mm -hmm. and it's not weird right because i truly mean that like it's a different kind you know it's not like i love you like my spouse or my human child but you know i have a deep appreciation and respect for the people that i work with which is one and that i think is directly correlated to the fact that we are all people first and we've talked about this before mm -hmm. that like we all know and understand that there is an entire life and world of ours that exists outside of the four walls within which we you know work air quotes because mm -hmm. sometimes we're working in different four walls but it it has never i mean short of like the first few months that I was here when there is that like trepidation and uncertainty about like where the boundaries are. But since then there has never been a time where it's like, I'm nervous about what happens if I have an emergency or if um, I need to go home because my kid is sick. Like I remember uh, my grandma passed away last fall and there was no question. Like I went and got to spend time with her in the hospital and this is like going to make me emotional, but there was no question. Like I was able to leave when I found out she had been admitted. Mm -hmm. It was like, I packed up my stuff and I drove and nobody questioned that at all it was like do what you need to do to take care of your family and yourself and like all of this will be here when you get back and that is such a rarity which is just unfathomable to me that that it is so rare because like this isn't our life you know like this job is not our life and yeah i, I, I get yeah. it and I think for a lot of people it is. Um, and that's, I mean, for me, it has been, I mean, I've had places where I worked 60, 80 hours a week. I was traveling mm -hmm. 20, 20 days a month, um, which I think is part of why, like, I've just revolted with this company and the pendulum just swung the other way. Mm -hmm. Like we had, um, we had the unlimited time off when I joined the company. That was a thing that had been around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, in part, as a company, you don't have to like carry that time on your books. So it's not yeah. really a liability um that you owe to people if they leave so there's that but it it's also just a like like you said it's just a human thing um mm -hmm. to be able to do that yeah i think it is it does like warrant a mention that we are a small company and we generally don't have issues with abuse of that policy we also don't really have issues with the enforcement of it that like I think there has been kind of a, a backlash to the unlimited policy because mid-level managers at, at larger institutions don't have the same philosophy around it where it's like, oh, it's unlimited. Well, why do you need to be gone or what are you doing? And and the the response to it has been like unlimited PTO isn't actually unlimited. And I can't mm -hmm. stress enough that it actually is here I, yeah definitely <laughs> and i actually have like an example or almost yeah i came across when i was doing research for this a rant that someone posted about flexible mm -hmm. environments yeah and i think it's a really i'll just read it exactly how he wrote it and i have some yeah. comments from people too so you guys can just give me your perspective on it too 
and I think it'll be pretty fun. So, uh, rant. This is titled "Unlimited or Flexible PTO Policies Suck If Your Teammates Never Take Time Off." So, mm-hmm. I started a job about ten months ago with a flexible PTO policy. Essentially, I have unlimited time off to use at my discretion, up to two weeks at a time. I understand the other arguments against these open PTO policies, but something else has become abundantly clear to me having been with the job for about a year now. The problem is my immediate teammates, there are five of us, never take time off. So what ends up happening is I am the slacker of the team. And Mm -hmm. with me, I do not hesitate to take a random Friday off if work is slow and plan to take whole weeks off for various trips and vacations coming up this summer and fall. All in all, I will probably take four weeks of total PTO this year. I get my work done on time and I'm generally well liked with the company and team. But I feel like an ass because in comparison the rest of my team to the rest of my teammates, I take a lot of time off. I want to be there for my team and pick up some of their work when they take their own time off, but as I mentioned before, they never take time off. So I have mm-hmm. yet I have yet been able to prove my ability to be a good teammate. I speak with folks from other departments and they regularly take time off, sharing fun stories about the trips they've taken and the places they've seen. Mm-hmm. Another thing I do not get to relate to with my team, because again, they are working too much to speak about anything else besides work. And I have a couple comments. Someone said, let them rot in their cubes. Enjoy your PTO. (laughs) I mean. (laughs) And then somebody said. So I. No, you can go. Actually, you can. Yeah, you can feel free to like chime in if you want. So there's one problem that's going on here. It's that manager. It's their manager. Their yeah. boss. That's the problem 100%. Um, if other departments are doing it, it's not the company. If he's able to do it and not get in trouble, it's not the company. It's not HR. It's the boss. And <laughs> one of the interesting things that I heard, um, I was kind of looking at our benefits and kind of where we go with them and what do we do because we kind of maxed out on the normal stuff. And I found an unlimited PTO policy that was a minimum of seven business days a year. So if you haven't taken mm-hmm. seven days off by December, you have to pick seven days in December and take them off. Um, mm-hmm. And that's that's initially I what that, I thought when I first read that too, because we're like definitely encouraged to take time off if we haven't here, which I think is mm-hmm. like a lot different than a lot of companies for sure. Yeah, Jesse got yeah. in trouble um, early on because he hadn't taken any vacation for over a year and I made him take two weeks. And he's like, I don't have anywhere to go. And I'm like, I don't care. Stay home. Like, you got a list of things you need to do <laughs> in your house. Like, because this was even, pre- it was before they had kids. Before even. they had kids. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I guess. I'm like, go see your parents. Go see your brother. Like, go camping. Like, I don't care what you do. You just need to not be here <laughs> for two weeks. Don't work. <laughs> um, and it's. I thought that was really hard for him. <laughs> it was. But, you know what, since then, he's been way better about it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, because like. Madison, his wife doesn't have the flexibility. She's a teacher, so she doesn't mm-hmm. have the flexibility to be like, "Oh, my kid's sick, gotta go." He's he's the one that stays home with them mm-hmm. most of the time. I think they trade yep. off if he's got like they do. Days. She can but, take like she's got time mm-hmm. off and sick time. She's got yeah, PTO. like yeah, yeah. But yeah, but like you know, and she she's also a coach, so she's got after works mm-hmm. after work stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that's one. That's the biggest problem that I see is people don't take it, but. Mm-hmm. It's on you to take it, but it's also on your manager to know you haven't and be like, hmm, I've never approved time off for this person in two years. Mm-hmm. We need to have a conversation about why you're not taking downtime. Because you come back fresher, you come back better, mm-hmm. more relaxed. Like, get out, go, leave. And mm-hmm. there's, there's also, there's, this, there's another comment, but it also is, it gives another perspective on why they might not be taking time off. Because this is what this uh, user said. Sometimes there's really strong social pressure not to take the PTO. Mm -hmm. I once worked at a small company that offered unlimited PTO. I straight up asked what the norm was and how much time off the managers, we had two, were fine with us taking when I got the job offer. They threw it back at me and asked what I would want. I said, I'm thinking probably four to five weeks. Their expression Mm -hmm. immediately soured and they said, Wow, that's a lot. We only usually take two to three. That's what people online and don't say take. it's unlimited. Right. And so so much for that's ridiculous. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's just normal. Yeah, I mean that's that their. 
right? Yeah, it is. Um, so I think that um, that's hugely problematic. So let's talk a little bit about abuse then, because like, so taking four or five weeks over the course of a year is an abuse. Um, if you're billable, if your work's getting done, if you're covered when you're gone, Mm -hmm. and you've given enough notice like technically if you take a two-week vacation you need to give us two weeks notice at least so we know and that's in part because we just have to make sure the work is covered but most of us i mean most people like arrange with the person backing them up to cover it anyway it's not like a boss has to do that for you right but in our handbook we've got four examples of abuse which is sort of unlimited time off flexible time work from home all of that so if an employee takes every Friday off in the summer, that's not what unlimited PTO is for. That would be a flexible schedule. So that's one where they should sit down with their boss and talk about having a flexible schedule, similar to what you did, mm -hmm. Zach, where you did, I think you did three tens and a seven and a half or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the example we give is, you know, <laughs> if they want Fridays off, they could do nine and a half hours Monday through Wednesday and nine hours on Thursday in order to have their Fridays off and keep their billability up and all that. Um, I mean, but if their billability was at 100%, nobody would care. But that's a conversation you have with a boss. You don't just do vacation time every Friday. Um, you arrive for work at 10 a.m. every day and you leave at 5 p.m. Um, so, you know, we do billable hours. Um, so coming in late and leaving like at, on time or early consistently isn't what the policy is designed for. Uh, again, you need to have a conversation with your boss and maybe go to three quarter time or part to half time, mm -hmm. um, which I know Caitlin, you know, because you were, you were half time to start, then you went full time, mm -hmm. then you went half time again. And, and then you I came was to like, three quarter oh time. dear God. Yes. <laughs> so whiplash from Caitlin's adjustable she's, schedule. She's a real chameleon that Caitlin Dre can't but make up her mind. <laughs> but every time you made the switch, we had a conversation mm -hmm. and you worked it out with Jessica or with me and we mm -hmm. move forward. Um, so that's one. Uh, if you call in sick every Monday, uh, we know what's going on on Sunday. We're not stupid. Um, Sunday fun day. <laughs> Get we are, your shit together. <laughs> yeah, we are going to have a conversation. And again, uh -huh. if you always need Mondays off because you are just a weekend partier, bless you. Go to a go to a flexible work schedule and finish. You know, work the you other. Should probably days. get your liver checked. <laughs> I mean, there's that too, and maybe have a conversation mm -hmm. with your doctor and or therapist. Um, uh -huh. And if you don't have a therapist, you might need one. Everyone um, should be in therapy. Okay, so the last one is important, especially in the state of Iowa. Um, you don't request time off. You don't put anything in our system. You just don't show up for three days in a row. So that's called you abandon your job. It is. And we actually have had somebody do that uh, at this company and had to base send before them a letter. I started. Uh, I think so. Uh, but basically just sent them a letter and said, you know, you haven't been here for three days in Iowa. This is job abandonment. Um, so, you know, turn your of, computer and buy. Yeah, you're terminated effectively. Immediately. Oh, he left his computer <laughs> on his desk. It was already there. I think his building badge is the only thing he had. And we can have those shut off. So yeah, um, and that's legally considered voluntary resignation. Again, your mm -hmm. your laws may vary in your state, but those are kind of some examples of abuse. But nowhere in there is taking four weeks off during the year, taking three weeks off, working remotely mm -hmm. for six months. Those are not abuse. Those are totally fine. Um, it's really like, are you doing something logical and covering your work, or are you screwing people over? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I think. I think the other thing to know in places where this might be the written policy, but it's not the social policy, is just the lack of trust on a team and like the infantilization mm. of the workforce where like somebody has to be watching you all the time and what are you doing if you're not at work and are you actually getting your stuff done? So like we don't really micromanage here. You're kind of left to your own devices. Mm -hmm. We don't really care, you know, like get your stuff done and then go do what you need to do. Like there's just none of that like watchdoggy kind of, I don't know, gossipy nonsense. Like well, there is exhausting. in other places. Nobody oh, likes God, being Can you imagine caring that much about what other people are doing? And like, what are you doing, Sheila? Mind oh, your own business. Oh, I've had bosses that stopped in great. every morning at like 
8 35 mm-hmm. what are you working on today what's your plan for today and it's like i don't fucking know i just showed up like so, work changes so much and shifts of it, every day what i think is so funny is like it i think that's like an attempt at being relatable but when managers don't have like a sense of self-awareness to know what their title grants them in perception to their employees, that like, that might be me just checking in to see how you're doing. But really what it comes off as is like, I'm watching you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Are you earning the money that I'm paying you? And it just like, it doesn't translate. Yeah. Yeah. So Zach, did you feel like you were kind of out on your own while you were working remotely or did you feel connected to the company and um, your peers well, and other people? It was definitely like an adjustment because I was so used to going into the office. I think a lot of people actually made an effort to like reach out to me and talk to me, which was nice because Misa can't talk back, but, uh, <laughs> 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 but yeah, so it definitely, it definitely was a little bit of an adjustment, but I didn't feel like I was like on my own island ever. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, I'm kind of mm-hmm. lonely because, you know, it's just me out here. But <laughs> like I said, like I have, I talked to Riley, Jester would reach out to me. Other people would ask how I'm doing. So yeah, I don't really think I felt too isolated. That's good. I mean, we have regular meetings. And honestly, even in the office, we'll Slack each other. Like when you're in the office, you sit mm-hmm. across from me and sometimes I'll still send you something via Slack, even though you're right there and I could just talk to you. But I don't know if you're busy. I don't know if you're doing something. And I just want to make, it's like just a, hey, here you go. You can have this um, this message for when you need it. Um, I think the other thing you talked about micromanaging, Caitlin. And for, for me, it's I like- read a damn novel. We have plenty of documentation <laughs> on what people are doing. So we know Uh how busy they are. We know how much is assigned to them. We know whether they're doing it, whether it's billable or not. Um, I think the biggest issue would come in for us is if people just weren't coding any time or they just Mm -hmm. had like half of their day was like just administrative with no notes. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, I mean, I can have half a day that's administrative, but I try to put notes in on what I was doing, even Mm -hmm. just for me, Mm -hmm. Um, because it's such a (laughs) catch-all like bucket. Yeah. Um, but we also have different classes for that, right? So if you're like doing billing, there's an accounting class or mm-hmm. a, not class like a course, but a class of yep. time classification. If you make me take an accounting class, I will quit. No, <laughs> you're not going to have to take an accounting class. Um, <laughs> you voluntarily under slight duress got a digital certification that was really great. But um, yeah, and very helpful. There will be no, uh, no. It was like, classes. it was like eating my vegetables where I was like, I know this will be helpful for mm-hmm. me, but I don't want to do it. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it's not hard in this day and age to understand what your team members are doing yeah. and what your teammates are doing. Um, and if you need but them to be have, like, physically. We don't have cursor tracking software. We're not like watching each other through our webcam. That's creepy and weird. Like. No, only if you, done. yeah, no, we don't even have that capability at the moment. Um, not that we yeah. ever get it, but if you want like, to like talk to somebody face to face, I know I, when I said that, I was like, okay, yeah, like we're not getting it. Like that's not happening. Ever. <laughs> um, I don't want to pop in on somebody's web, webcam while they're working from home. That's so creepy. That's gross. Um, I mean, and with Zach's that's internet, gross. Zach's internet was also super sketch in their temporary apartment. So <laughs> he was rarely on camera and he would routinely like drop off a call and come back and drop off a call and come back. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, it definitely that's... became a routine. Mm-hmm. But it became kind of a comical thing. We knew you weren't trying to like game the system by turning your camera off and like you weren't really there and you were on Bluetooth, like on your phone, like six miles away at the gym. <laughs> but um but honestly, if you wanted to join a call while you were walking the dog, like put in your headphones and join the call while walking the dog. We don't care. Mm-hmm. I almost did that, but I I literally had no idea how well the service would be. <laughs> so I was like afraid that I would just drop off and not be able to join back. <laughs> but yeah, I, de- I had to like, I definitely had to be on my game because just paying attention, like if it got a little too quiet, like while I was sitting there, I'd be like, did I drop off? So I'd have to like <laughs> make sure like, Am I still here? Yeah. Like, and I as guess... soon as somebody got quiet, but I knew it was time to rejoin, but yeah. Oh, and I misspoke. Like page 20 of our benefits book, we got a whole section on flexible location. It's just not covered in flexible time off. It's a whole section. 
It's a whole section. Short term and long term. Uh, how do you do it? How do you plan for it? Well, we really have a good guide here. We were pretty smart about this. I think um, that's what's really important about attention. Like, we know what we're doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Like if you, I think a lot of people go to companies where they don't have like it clearly defined. Mm -hmm. And so they have no idea. Like it's almost like a fear thing. Like you don't know if like mm -hmm. what you want to do is right. So you just don't do it to avoid like, yeah. Don't well, rock and, the boat, baby. Yeah. And so many companies, you know, they had to go remote during COVID and all that. And then mm -hmm. people got used to it and people moved like because they thought it was going to be permanent. And some companies have gone to permanent like remote and it's great or your option of remote or in office. And we've got that like full time remote, part time remote, full time mm -hmm. in office, whatever you want to do. Um, we've got plans for that. But then like they started forcing people to come back to work or like get fired. And everybody, I think, really panicked and was like, God, is my remote job really remote? Um, mm -hmm. And there's a whole thing about like people posting jobs as remote on Indeed and other places when they're not really remote. They just know they need to to get applicants. What? And then when they get into the interview, they're like, oh, yeah, this isn't a remote position. It's in X, Y, Z location or one of these three locations. And it's like, then that's post not remote. Right. And and I think that there's been a, a lot of pressure on those job boards um, to crack down to on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And really make sure that it truly is uh, a remote option. But yeah. No, and this is like this is where we have to dismantle the patriarchy. Like the one of the articles that you sent, Zach, was talking about uh, they didn't use this term, but it's basically like survivor bias. So it's like all of these upper management folks are pressuring people to return to the office when that doesn't fit the employee's lifestyle any longer because mm -hmm. they're caring for aging parents. They're caring for young children. They live many hours away from the office and they don't want to have to commute every day because like that, that commute time isn't accounted for. But all of these upper management people have this survivor bias where it's like, well, I had to be in the office all the time and it wasn't that bad. So you need to be here too. But what they don't realize is that their wives or their mothers were home making sure that the laundry was done and the dishes were clean and the groceries were brought bought and like they didn't have to do any of this other unseen domestic labor to keep their life running and that's the part that is so important in a flexible or remote policy is like there's all this other stuff that has to happen for us to be people mm -hmm. and not appreciating or understanding that is a disservice to the workforce at large because you're losing out on really talented women managers most most often it's women with additional talents but for whom the the home workload falls to and they're not able to devote time in both places and so the choice is do i keep my household running and my sanity or do i quit the you know like quit this job like it doesn't, it doesn't equate. And the, like the, the lack of understanding around that is just beyond frustrating for me. Well, I mean, and I would think that a lot of the shift that happened when Gen X was growing up, which I am, I mean, we had, a, a, most of us had both parents working outside the home. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a lot of stuff on our own. And, you know, things kind of shifted there and responsibilities were at home were transferred a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you would think that that would have shifted a few things, but I feel like we like make a little bit of headway and then we just recoil. And actually mm -hmm. what happened was a lot of Gen Xers would do a, sing a one parent working from working uh, outside the house and mm -hmm. the other parent being a stay at home parent because of the way they were raised that mm -hmm. I was like the, you know, I want to be there for my kids or they would just take time off until the kids were like five. Mm -hmm. And then go back to work, but do it part time. So you go to work when the kids are in school. My mom actually did that early on with me um, yeah. before she was, had a banking job where she could go in at yeah. nine and be done by three. And if I was going to school at 830 and done at 320, it was perfect. She could drop me off, go to work, mm -hmm. leave work, pick me up. But um, that's also because you lived in an exceptionally commutable area, too. So tiny, like people that live. Yeah, right. Like town of 6,000 people. Tiny mapped out. Five exactly. miles like, wide. Right. But like, that's not tenable for most people in larger metro areas. Like even in Omaha, that's not 
you know, 20 minute commute is not really an option for a lot of people. Like, just depends. Yeah. You have to, yeah. you have to make sure there are you're too many variables. Exactly. Minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then a, you know, a semi spills tomatoes on I 80 and your commute is now an hour and a half. It was avocados. Yeah. It was avocados, I think, but that was over my life. Um, but yeah, and I think that that commute time that you're not getting paid for, but like mm -hmm. when you don't have that commute time, you can actually be fresher and ready to work sooner. Um, mm -hmm. You know, much easier for Zach, you to start your day at 7 a.m. or 6.30 or whenever you were starting at oh, yeah. 10 hour days when you're just rolling out of bed. You don't even have a shower if you don't have a meeting, like right. who cares? Um, even if you do have a meeting, you're on camera, nobody can smell you. Just true. Must the I hair mean, a little bit. My hair will look a little bit crazy um, <laughs> if I don't shower. I need to get it cut. But um, yeah, it's just easier. I mean, and I work from home. I'm working from home today. Um, we have mm -hmm. a, a sick dog that we're we're keeping for Buddy. a family member. He's he's doing all right, but um, it's just easier if we're here. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was. I actually started work this morning at seven thirty, and then resisted the urge to start messaging people because I know y'all aren't like you're not sitting there waiting for Slack to pop up. No, that was the as hardest mentioned, part about being on a I'm different wrestling time zone. A tiny child into shoes. But yes, also that, Zach, where you'd be like, hey, I'm working on this. I'm like, I haven't put my clothes on yet today. I'm really impressed with your work ethic. <laughs> yeah, because starting at seven <laughs> on the East Coast is starting at six for you guys. So it's like, <laughs> that's where the uh, in Gmail, you can schedule an email to go later. In yeah. Slack, you can schedule a message to post later. So if you're thinking about it and you want it to post like yeah. at nine o'clock our time, you can do it. I did that over the weekend uh, for Jesse and Jessica. Oh, we may have dogs barking here in a minute. Oh boy. We're looking at the window. So I don't know uh, <laughs> if something's going to happen. <laughs> but I feel like we've kind of exhausted this topic in a roundabout way. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely covered everything the point I wanted is, to talk about. <laughs> right? The point is pe treat people like people. Mm -hmm. Let parents and people with lives outside of work do their lives outside of work and like don't don't be an asshole about it i don't mm -hmm. know it doesn't seem like it's that hard you make it seem very easy so i don't well, know what everybody else is doing <laughs> we try we try to make it easy i yeah. would be i would be curious to hear from someone who does not have a flexible policy and likes it mm. this is mm. like those like rides and grind like yeah. I mean, and that's no. Hustle like, culture will be the death of us. Mm. <laughs> I hate hustle culture. It's so gross. Yeah. It's so gross. Get yeah, some people are love working it. 12 hour days. Are you even really working? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you don't need to follow those dude bros on Twitter or wherever you're at because it's don't like, worry. no. If you're toxic, <laughs> I'm like, I'm done with you. Yeah. Report. Like, work ten hours at your main job and then four hours on your side hustle. And it's mm -hmm. like I gotta eat. And that's and sleep. all because that's all because we're drowning in student loan debt and there's no other option. We've had to yeah. monetize all of our hobbies because the world is expensive and it's fine. That's it's a, a whole other podcast, I think. I think we True. have to have a, yeah, like a <laughs> That's gonna be a much stiffer drink than a Paloma. This is too light oh for discussing. God the state of student loans in America. Mm -hmm. All right. I think with mm -hmm. that, we should probably wrap this up because we've, we've really gone long. You're going to have an editing job on this one, Zach. Might be a two-parter. I don't know. We'll have to see how it sounds. <gasps> could be. It could be. Or it could just be long. Who knows? That's yeah, up to you. True. Come. All, All right. right. Producer Zach, Y'all on the flip side. Us. All right. Bye, everybody. Yep. Thanks for having Bye. me. That's it for another episode of Cocktails, Tangents, and Answers. We hope it was as much fun to listen to as it was to make. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at, at Rich Mackey. I try not to make it too difficult. It's just my name. And you can find our agency at antidote underscore seven one. That's A-N-T-I-D-O-T-E underscore seven one on Twitter and Instagram as well. And you can find me at home sipping a craft cocktail prepared by my in-home bartender. It's my husband. We'll be back with another episode every other week and a whole new cocktail recipe, plenty more tangents, and of course, answers to those pressing marketing questions. And if you'd like to send us a question, you can go to ctapodcast.live to send us an email. Or you can call our hotline at 402-718-9971 and leave us a voicemail. Your questions might be used for future episodes of the podcast. For now, like and subscribe and tune in next time. 